The topic of discussion for this video presentation is what is ECI? ECI stands for Estimated Chargeable Income. And what is the purpose of ECI? Are there any exemptions from filing the ECI for Singapore companies? So let's have a look. So here I am presenting a sample timeline for a company in Singapore. And let's suppose that the accounting year of the company is from 1st April 2020 to 31st March 2021. If you are aware of the basis period and year of assessment, then the final tax return for this accounting year of this company is due by 15th of December 2022, which I have shown here right below. So if you are not clear about this concept, then I have already posted another video on this, which you can check. However, what this case means is the accounting year ended on 31st March 2021. But the tax authorities will come to know about that income only on 15th December 2022. And there is almost 20 months difference between these two dates. So tax authorities are going to get the revenue paid to them towards this taxes quite late. So to avoid this situation, there is a concept of estimated chargeable income. And the rule is that within three months after the end of accounting year, every company has to file an ECI. So ECI is just an estimate. It need not be accurate. It means it might have been prepared based on your rough accounts ready as at that point of time and the amount may change later on. But of course, there is also an expectation that ECI and actual income should not vary too much. So the ECI needs to be filed as mentioned here and the purpose is to give that revenue back to the government authorities earlier than what normally they will get at if they stick to the return date only. ECI filing is quite simple. So it has to be done in three months and when ECI is to be filed, the information that is normally asked is the total revenue of the company and the estimated chargeable income with various tax rates. Other than that, no other information is asked from you. So I guess now you understand the concept of ECI well. Now let's have a look if there are any exemptions from filing ECI. So a company need not file ECI, it is exempted from filing ECI if annual revenue of the company is not more than 5 million Singapore dollars in a financial year and ECI is nil for that year of assessment. So note the word and, I have highlighted it in yellow, that means both these conditions must be satisfied. If only one of this condition is satisfied, then you will not qualify for ECI exemption. For example, if your annual revenue is less than 5 million Singapore dollars and if the ECI is let's say even 100 dollars, then you will be required to file the estimated chargeable income. Additionally, there are some entities who are by law not required to file ECI. So I will just paste the list here. However, most of the companies will not fall in these categories. So foreign ship owners or charterers, foreign universities, designated unit trust and approved CPF unit trust and real estate investment trusts are exempted from filing ECI because they have some other way of declaring that information. So that is about ECI, why it is required and if any exemptions are available. So in summary, every company needs to file estimated chargeable income within three months from the end of the financial year. In some scenarios, companies are exempted from filing ECI as explained in this video presentation. Thank you for watching this video. This video was brought to you by Epica Consulting Singapore. Subscribe to our channel today to get notified when new videos are posted.